In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create pixel effects in Adobe Photoshop. What's going on everyone? My name is Tom from Dreadlabs and in today's video I'm going to show you how to create pixel effects in Adobe Photoshop in two ways. So in the first part of this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create pixel effects for stuff like your text which will be in one color and in the second part of this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create pixel effects with multiple colors like the skull on the screen that you're seeing right now. So without any further ado let's dive straight into the video. Right so we're here in Photoshop and I'm going to just grab some text and this effect works really well if you have curved text. Then that's where our pixel effect is really coming to its full potential. So this is all you need in order to create this effect. A piece of text and a white background. So I'm going to drag this menu up a little bit. I'm going to select both of these layers. Right click and then click on convert to smart object. The next thing that you want to do is go to filter, pixelate, mosaic. And let's type in a cell size of 10. You can do higher, but this will still make sure that you'll have some detail in your text. The next thing you want to do is go to image, adjustments, threshold. And this will make sure that your image is completely black or white. And you can play around with the slider until you're satisfied with your result. Now we have the smart object here. And if you want to change the size of your pixels, you can just simply go to the mosaic and change the size. Let's half this by going to five or maybe double it and go to 20. So it's as simple as that. And let me show you how to recolor this real quick. Let's go back to 10 pixels. So now we need to double click on our layer. And all we need to do is drag in this slider here where it says current layer. And this will make sure that it's now only visible in the black parts of the layer. And since we use a threshold adjustment, our image is basically either completely black and completely white. So all you need to do now is right click again and turn this into a smart object. And now it's a completely transparent smart object and you could just simply use a color overlay here to change the color of your text. So that's the first part of this video. Fairly easy, fairly straightforward. And now I'm going to show you how to do this with multiple colors. All right, so I'm going to drop in a skull 3D render from the Cranium pack. You can find this skull render on dreadlabs.net. Same goes for the font that I use called Nounash. Both of those can be found through the link in the description down below. So again, we need one background layer with a white background. And I'm gonna rename the layers real quick. And again, we're gonna select both of these layers, right click and convert them into a smart object. And it gets the same treatment. We're gonna to go to the mosaic first. Let's type in 15 this time. But of course, this is all depending on the size of your own artwork. The second thing we're gonna do is add a threshold to it. And the first thing that you wanna do is slide this thing all the way to the right until your whole skull is completely black, like this one. Now I'm gonna duplicate the skull three times by pressing Command or Control J on my keyboard. And I'm gonna call the first one Highlights, the second one Midtones, and the last one Shadows. And if you want more colors in these, you can basically make more layers like this, but I'm gonna show you how to do it with three. The next thing that we wanna do is double click on this layer and again, drag in this slider right here. And we can simply go right click copy layer style and select all of the other two layers and paste that layer style in. And this will now ensure us that our layers are completely transparent. So the next thing that we wanna do is group all of these. And again, I'm gonna rename the groups as well, just to make it a little bit more clear on what we're doing. And I'm gonna make solid color. And I'm gonna make three actually. Dark red one, an orange one, and a yellow one. And you might have already guessed it, but we're going to use these to color in our different layers. So we want to drag these outside of the highlights group. And on top of the highlights panel here, uh, I'm going to put the yellow one. Hold all or option on my keyboard and hold my mouse in between the two layers. And you can see this little icon appearing. And this will make sure that this will only be visible on the highlights group. And this is called a clipping mask if you're not familiar. Let's collapse the groups for now. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the red and the orange layer. So again, make sure that they're above the corresponding group. 
hold Alt or Option on a Mac on your keyboard. Make sure this icon appears if you hold your mouse in between the two layers and then click. And now we see that only our uh, yellow layer is visible, but that's because all of them are the exact same. And now we're basically gonna play around with the threshold. So let's hide the highlights layer for now. And we need to double click on the threshold layer here and slide this inward. And as you can see, these shadows now start appearing or disappearing, I should say. And I just realized that I switched the colors around, my bad. So I'm gonna just fix that real quick. And now we can just slide in those midtones somewhere around here. And we can also use the threshold to do the same thing for the highlights, as you can see right here. Another way to do this to have a little bit more freedom with the colors is to make the red one 100% black, the middle one 50% gray. So make sure that the brightness is set to 50. Oh, I did it in one click. It's actually amazing. And we can group all of this together and call this skull. And now we apply a gradient map to this. So hold Alt or Option again to make this a clipping mask. And now we can basically map all of these colors to whatever gradient we choose. So for example, if I now make this red, then the darkest parts of the image will be mapped to red and the lightest parts will be mapped to white. And I, as you can see, I have a fair amount of uh, clipping masks already made. And this way you can also easily invert it if you want to. So I think this is actually the way that it's not inverted, if that makes sense. But yeah, depending on what it is that you want to achieve with this, I think this is the easiest way to do it and have to click as less stuff as possible, if that makes sense. Uh, for example, now I can just simply make this bottom one black, the middle one maybe like a slight purple. And now if we reverse it again, you know, you can basically play around with this and have ultimate freedom. And let's make sure there's a black background in here. And if you want to change some stuff around, for example, if you are having a black background and you want to have a stroke around it, all you need to do is double click into one of your skull layers and make a black outline here. Let's do a 10 pixel stroke, save this. And as you can see, the stroke is now also visible in here. It's a little bit easier to see. If you want to have them more prominent or less prominent, you can just play around with the threshold slider. So there you have it, guys. A little bit more info on how to work with pixelized images in Adobe Photoshop. In my example, I use three different colors, but of course you can also do this with five colors, 10 colors if you really want to and get creative with it. Only takes a little bit more time, but the principle is the exact same. If you want to get the PSD file for this, so you can basically use this as a template file, you can find the link to that on my Patreon channel, which is in the description down below. This will also give you access to all of the project files from all of my tutorials, as well as a ton of extra bonuses, including a discount on the Dreadlabs web store, where you can find a lot of the assets used in this and all of my other videos. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below in the comments or join us on Discord and send a screenshot if you have any specific questions. Don't forget to leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss future videos. And with all of that being said, this is Tom from Dreadlabs tuning out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.